Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's uh, Kafir Middle East update, the week of May 6th. And just a reminder, um, we're getting really close to taking off for Israel. And as we've been talking about, when we're outside of the country, it's um, Wi-Fi uploading and all of that sort of uh, tech stuff is not as easy as when I'm sitting in my... Uh, in my office upstairs. So for the next month, uh, the Kafir Middle East update will be primarily the PDF PowerPoint that will be sent out. I will be reporting from Israel and I'm hoping that it can be um, kind of less than five minutes upload easy, but no promises there. But again, we stay consistent both in our Bible reading program as well as our Middle East update. So they will be available, but primarily as PDF PowerPoint notes. Okay, well, let's take a look at what's going on this week in Israel. Um, good, bad, and ugly. That's about the best way to put it. Uh, part of the bad and ugly is the continuation of our college campuses here in the U.S. becoming more and more blatantly anti-Semitic. The Harvard Crimson student newspaper has officially endorsed uh, the BDS movement. Uh, once again, uh, uh, I, I'm sure it's a minority. It's militant and it's working. Um the, a poll just taken in Israel, uh, because of all of what's transpired through Ramadan, the, uh, the uptick in violence, uh, right-wing Jews, center-right, are now less likely to see any possibility of a shared future with Arabs. No big surprise there, but when we're hearing all of this, two-state solution, living side by side in peace, pretty far-fetched. Um, the defense minister, Benny Gantz, uh, he's the son of Holocaust survivors. He's come out, and this is interesting, he's come out praising the powerful ties between Israel and the Christian evangelical community. Once again, uh, even the most ardent, solid Jewish, um, not so much believers, but in fact, just the opposite. But Jews are understanding that their closest friends in these days are not necessarily the liberal Jews that are living in the dispersia, but evangelical Christians. Let that sort of sink in because that's what we're all about is understanding, praying, and supporting the Israel of today. And then finally, um, you know, it's been a, a week of memorials and remembering, uh, whether it's the Holocaust or whether it's fallen soldiers or whether it's Independence Day in Israel. Um, the bottom line is that it's a somber and yet joyful week. Interesting that for the first time that I can remember, the comments from both Israeli President Herzog as well as Bibi Netanyahu, uh, and we'll go into this a little bit more in one of our prolonged articles here, but they both, in speaking of the Jewish state's rebirth in 1948, used the fulfillment of, of prophecy in their speeches, the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37. And the bottom line is that most often uh, Jews do not talk about the fulfillment of prophecy. No big surprise, it's coming. He's coming, amen? So now our articles, uh, again, I always wanna highlight heroes. And um, this is good, bad, and ugly. This is the ugly and the bad of um, the story or the event behind the killing of, and I cannot pronounce his name, unfortunately. His last name is Golov. He's 23 years old. He was stationed at a security booth outside of Ariel 
along with his fiancée, Victoria, uh, IDF, security, uh, and two Palestinian gunmen drive up, uh, get out of the car and open fire, and Golov um, lays over his fiancée in order to protect her. Again, the suspects have been found, uh, but senseless terrorism. Hero. Don't care about who the um, terrorists are. No need to give you that information. But we remember the heroic. Joel Rosenberg, uh, in an article from uh, Israel News, uh, is talking about Bibi's comeback. And he basically says, Bibi just ran into Bibi, spent an hour interviewing him. He's tanned, he's rested, and he's ready. And his article starts with, to those who hate Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, you probably don't want to read this column. Last Thursday, I spent an hour with him. Um, and the bottom line is he doesn't look depressed. He doesn't look dejected. He doesn't look discouraged or distraught. This is not a man licking his wounds and contemplating retirement. On the contrary, the first thing that came to mind when Netanyahu and I shook hands was that I was looking into the eyes of a man preparing to make a political comeback and supremely confident in his chances of success. So once again, our report, we're gonna wait and see but we know that the fledgling, weakened Naftali Bennett uh, coalition is, uh, seems to be slip sliding away. And waiting in the wings is Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, an ugly story from uh, one of the Russian foreign ministers, Sergei Larov. Uh, now, and I will give you this report, but I will say right now that Putin has come out to apologize for this report. Uh, Israel leaders demanded an apology and denounced the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, for saying, and his quote was that Adolf Hitler had Jewish blood and Jews are among the worst anti-Semites. And so this was made public. And once again, as I mentioned, Putin has come out retracting that and apologizing for that. And especially in the eve or in the week of the Holocaust remembrance. Um, there, the, the event that took place when we talked about uh, the hero section, the young man in the IDF, uh, Hamas is claiming responsibility for this. And once again, it's, uh, it's not hidden. There's no apologies whatsoever. In fact, just the opposite. Uh, and we're seeing this sort of um, intifada violence ratcheting up. And make no mistake about it, Israel will come with a hammer. And that's uh, on its way. It will take place. But once again, the Hamas military wing that's claiming responsibility for all of this, um, kind of the hurrah, look at our boys sort of stuff, a price will be paid. A um, couple more things before I, I leave you, because uh, once again, as I mentioned, I can't wait to get on that plane. I can't wait to land. Um, but... Uh, there's a Hebrew phrase that's um, kol ha kavad, hol ka kavad. Uh, it means all respect. Uh, you say it to a family member or a friend that does something really important or impressive. And let me just say, and this is from Joel Rosenberg's article, he says, let me just say to both President Herzog and to former Prime Minister Netanyahu, kol ha kavad to both of you. Um, and this is that what I was referring to in the opening uh, that both of these men in their speeches concerning Holocaust remembrance spoke of the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, again, 
Uh, we're seeing more and more of this surface. Uh, evangelicals have no problem with this. We see that valley of dry bones. We see the miracle of 1948 being the fulfillment of scripture. But now we're hearing it from Jews. And uh, there's no doubt that God's at work in the land and among his people. Not enough Israeli leaders say it, but now they are. And so for both Herzog as well as Bibi, uh, may your tribe increase and kol ha kavad. Well done. Uh, some good news to kind of wrap things up with a couple things. One, uh, the U.S. Senate, uh, two important votes over the last week, 86 to 12 and 62 to 32. The first being the Senate votes to maintain U.S. economic sanctions on uh, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. They reject any possibility that Biden's deal would remove the IRGC from a terrorist list. Again, 86 to 12. Both of these sponsored by James Lankford, U.S. Senate, as well as Ted Cruz. Uh, the other vote, 62 to 33, to reject any new nuclear deal with Iran that does not also stop and speak of Tehran's support for terrorism, their missile buildup, and something that we'll report on more and more in the upcoming future, I'm sure, is this collusion with China. So again, good news, a strong stand from our Senate. Uh, finally, uh, I want to thank all of you that have supported um, the Ukrainian mission for Jews making their Aliyah back to Israel. Our friends, MTI Ministry to Israel, uh, Michael Utterback sent out a plea and the response has been overwhelming. Uh, Sharon and I are taking quite a bit of luggage and extra luggage filled with baby clothes needs that um, because the Re Ukrainians that are making their Aliyah coming back to Israel are primarily now mothers and little children because the men still are required to stay and fight. And so MTI uh, has a ministry and it, it's the basic needs. You're talking about diapers, toothbrushes, you name it, baby clothes, that sort of thing. And the response has been overwhelming. And then I noticed this one article if in the picture here in slide number 10, you'll see Michael Evans, uh, a believer, evangelical, Jewish, major supporter of uh, Israel. He's the one that's behind the FOZ, the Friends of Zion Museum, that if you're in Jerusalem, it's a must see. But you can see from the picture uh, a concern and care for Ukrainian Jews that are making their way back. And so look forward to spending time at FOZ, understanding what they're doing for the refugees as well. But I wanted to, again, just thank you all for your support. Again, we can't wait to get back to the land. It's sort of a recon mission for Sharon and I. We have uh, upcoming tours this fall, uh, two in particular, one September 14th through the 23rd, and then another a couple weeks later. Uh, the second one is already filled, but we're still uh, looking for people to sign up for our first trip back to Israel for Holy Ground Exploration, September 14th through the 23rd. One thing that Sharon and I uh, will, we've learned is that we never take a trip to Israel for granted. Who would have thought that in March 2020, I remember sitting in the airport in Ben Gurion, one of the last groups to fly out. Who would have thought that the world, not just Israel, but that the world would shut down for two years? This will be our first time back. We want to see the effects that COVID has had. We want to make sure that the tours that we have to offer are the quality in which we've been able to provide over the years. So remember us in prayer. 
uh, safe travel. There's still some hoops you have to jump through. You don't need to be vaccinated, but you do need to have a PCR test upon before you leave, as well as when you land. We're just going to try to figure out the smoothest way for all of those that are going to join with us in the upcoming year. So God bless you. Remember us and Shalom.